Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Captain Davis speaking. Pleased to have you on board here tonight for a very special flight as we honor uh, Chaplain Capon for his bravery and his humanity and for the way in which God used him to fight for the liberties that we enjoy and also how God worked through him to provide to so many people dignity in death. And trying to summarize in my own mind the gravity of this event, it, uh, it came to me as a feeling of honor, of gratitude, of indebtedness, of thankfulness, and of awe. Today, as I was standing at the memorial structure that had Father Capon's name etched in it, as I walked down the hill, a light rain started falling, and it occurred to me that perhaps God was sharing a few tears as well. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you. Have a nice flight and welcome aboard. There isn't hardly anyone that can't appreciate and even identify with the sense of coming home. You know, that, that means something to us as human beings. This experience, I think, resonates with all human beings who know what it feels like when you finally can come home. It was a great honor to have the uh, remains of Father Capon come to our cathedral. If he is going to be a saint, it would be wonderful if the people of Hawaii can honor Father Capon as well. And to be in his presence, I think it will be something that I will remember for a long time. When I first became commander of the POW MIA accounting mission in 2012, DPA's predecessor, I read about Father Capon receiving posthumously the Congressional Medal of Honor. Our unit was charged with his recovery. And back then in 2013, I thought to myself, wouldn't it be great, miraculous, if one day our unit, our agency, found the remains of Father Capon? We have a responsibility not to forget those that gave their life. As a scientist, uh, I rarely ever say something is 100%. But with Father Capon's remains, um, I am 100% sure it is Father Capon, based on all the analysis, historical and also scientific analysis we did. It is Father Capon. It really is Father Capon. Now, I, I always knew we would probably someday have to do the Medal of Honor. I mean, because that always seemed attainable. You know, the sainthood process always kind of seemed attainable, but to find his remains, no. Never ever thought it would ever come through. We went out the front doors and uh, to see all those people, you, you could feel the love they had for him. And to see all the lab technicians had their hands over their hearts and, and, and all the military standing there saluting him. It just, I mean, it tore my heart out. It'll never be forgotten. You know, the respect that was paid to him as we made our way back here to Wichita, the airlines, you know, just to show their profound respect for this fallen soldier, I, I was really impressed by all of that. a tremendous privilege and an honor to help coordinate this travel for Chaplain Capon. I'm a better person for what I've witnessed over the last 36 hours. Seeing the honor that's paid towards this hero that none of us have ever met. Uh, so thank you for letting American Airlines uh, do the honor of bringing Chaplain Capon back home. 
uh, safe travel. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with a uh, great deal of pleasure, we welcome you here to uh, Wichita. We're going to be uh, getting one more water salute uh, in just a few moments. Thanks so very much for your attention. Thanks for traveling, American, and welcome back. When we pulled up and, and went through the last water cannon, I saw Paul Roach, you know, this frail guy, standing as straight as can be and just just wanting to be there to welcome, welcome Father home. He saw him as a fellow soldier. He saw him as his friend. He saw him as someone who saved his life. It's hard to tell about being with him again. But we were glad to have him back home. The timing of finding him. There was a point, there was a purpose behind that. I absolutely believe it. People today really need him. People who've been born well after he died. I think he helps remind people that no matter how hard it gets, it's so important to love and take care of others. The amount of people when we pulled into Pilsen on Saturday, just, you know, they were there because Father was coming home. I mean, they, you know, they've prayed to him forever. And the tears and the, just the, I mean, that, that love and pulling there was the, the most heartwarming thing I've ever witnessed. I wish to extend a warm welcome to all of you. Father Cape and his home. He is home. I would not have wanted to be anywhere else but in uh, St. John's Church in Pilsen to celebrate with the parish um, this Mass of Thanksgiving. Here, young Emil grew into the man God needed him to become, a man of virtue, a man of values, a man who knew and wasn't afraid to roll up his sleeves and work hard. 70 years waiting and praying for him to come home. And he was finally here. It just was almost surreal. He just, I just never thought that day would ever come. My wife and I, we wanted to take care of a couple of the POWs. You know, these, these guys are the reason why we know the stories of Father Emil. These guys are the ones who never stopped talking about Father Emil. And so this moment, we wanted to make sure that they had their moment with Father Emil. I had a prisoner of war camp hat. I decided I would present it to him as a memento from all the POWs came in contact with. Most of us are here, in fact all of us in this room are here for Father Cape. I'd like to introduce to you a man who is here because of Father Cape. We have with us Herb Miller. You never find another man like him. Didn't matter if it was an enemy. He dragged that wounded man back and the best he could bandage him up. That's the kind of man he was. You don't have him like that anymore. In the military, we say we never leave a fallen comrade. And so the value that we place on human life and service, um, and for those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, to see the level of care and uh, effort that is taken to recover them, it's just awe-inspiring. The Army gives so much respect to the phone. We want to go out of our way to show that that soldier's life mattered. He'll get a caisson procession from Veterans Memorial Park uh, all the way to the cathedral. 
Once at the cathedral, we'll have our pallbearers and we'll have a color guard and we'll have a firing detail. This is our, our way that we salute those who are departing our ranks. And it's a final goodbye from the army, from the unit to one of its own as they make that transition. Jeff, Emily, 5,500 people made their way to Hartman Arena tonight for the first of two memorial services for the late war hero. I look out on this crowd and realize that this is just a fraction of the lives that he touched. And it's just amazing, so I thank you all for being here. I'm going someplace where I've always wanted to be. And when I get there, I'll say a prayer for you. Uncle Emil, welcome home. We now have given new life to Father Capon, and more importantly to Father Capon's story, such that now that there's mortal remains, People can now look to that with a renewed sense of hope, a renewed sense of inspiration, and a renewed sense of love. Dear friends, allow me to bring my reflections on this solemn day to a close by extending to each of you an invitation. And it is simply this, come to his tomb. Pray there and sit there in the stillness of the beauty and peace that surrounds you. And let God speak to you through the example and the witness of this servant of God. Come to his tomb. Chaplain Father Emil Capon, servant of God, pray for us.